Hello everyone. In today's lecture, I'm going to solve a regional mathematical Olympiad problem of the year 2003. Now the question is, find all real numbers A for which the equation has exactly three distinct real solution in X. Now the equation is X square plus A minus 2 into X plus 1 is equal to 3 times mod of X. Now feel free to pause the video and try this question. Now before calculating the roots of this quadratic equation or satisfying the condition for three distinct real roots, I need both quadratic equation. That means I need to define mod of x first. Now in order to do that, I'm going first I'm going to take x is greater than or equal to 0. For x is greater than or equal to 0, I'll get a quadratic x square plus this mod of x will open with a positive sign. So 3 plus 3x will go on the other side and that will give you a minus 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is the first quadratic you will get here and one more quadratic you will get for x is less than 0. For x is less than 0, this mod of x will open with a negative sign and the re remaining quadratic will be x square plus a plus 1 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. So let's say this is the second quadratic equation we got here. Now from both of the quadratic, the condition is we have to get three distinct real roots in x. So how it is possible? So there are cases, okay. The first case is, think about it. From first quadratic equation, the maximum roots we can get is 2 and the minimum roots we can get is 0. So let's say from first quadratic equation, we are getting discriminant greater than 0. If we are getting discriminant greater than 0, that means we are getting two real and distinct roots, let's say alpha and beta. Now once we get two roots from the first equation, how many roots we want from the second equation? That is, I think, 1. In order to get a single root and that is real, we want the discriminant to be 0. So this is my case 1. Now for case 2, it's very obvious that we have to get two roots from the second equation and one root from the first equation. So for the first equation, the discriminant value should be equal to 0 because from here you will get one root, okay, and that is real. And from second equation, discriminant should be positive. And let's say the roots are alpha 1 and beta 1. And for the first equation, let's say the root is gamma 1 and here it is gamma. So now I'm going to apply this first case and second case to calculate the value of A. What are the values of A in the next? Now I'm going to solve case 1 in which I have assumed that the first quadratic will give me two real and distinct roots and the second equation will give me only one real root. So let's start with the second equation that is x square plus a plus 1 into x plus 1 is equal to 0 will give me only one root and that is real. For that I have given you d is equal to 0. So let's calculate the value of a from this. So d is b square that is a plus 1 whole square minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now from here I can say that a plus 1 will be equal to plus or minus 2 because 4 you can take on other side and you can take square root. So immediately you will get this. Now from here I can see the two values of a will appear that is the first value is a is equal to 1 and the second value is for minus 2 you will get minus 3 here. So we are getting two values of a here that is a is equal to 1 and a is equal to minus 3. So now let's check for both the values are the condition is satisfying. So for, for the first value a is equal to 1. Let's say this is satisfying our given condition or not. So for a is equal to 1 in the for the second equation we'll get x square plus a plus 1 that is 2x plus 1 is equal to 0 and from this equation I can see that this implies x is equal to minus 1 and yes we are getting a negative root that is our condition we have assumed that for x less than 0 from this quadratic we'll get a root and we are getting minus 1 so that is accepted. Now we have to check simultaneously for the second equation also for x is greater than or equal to 0. So for, for the first equation x square plus we'll get if you put a is equal to 1 here you'll get this as minus 4 here and plus 1 is equal to 0. Now from here you'll get the both values alpha and beta here. Both values will be positive it's visible. So I think a is equal to 1 is accepted here. Now let's check for a is equal to minus 3. Now for a is equal to minus 3 the second equation let's check the roots for the second equation so we'll get this as x square the second equation will give you minus 2x and plus 1 is equal to 0 now this implies we'll get x is equal to 1 now if this is giving you x is equal to 1 and we have assumed that x is less than 0 in this case in the second quadratic so we're not going to accept this a is equal to minus 3 in the first case only because from the second equation it's giving me negative root and i want it's giving me positive root, I want negative root here. So in total, 
from first case a is equal to 1 is accepted here and a is equal to minus 3 is clearly rejected here. Now let's calculate from the second case the value of a. Now in the second case I have assumed that the first equation will give me only one real root and the second equation will give me two distinct real root. So let's start with d is equal to 0 for the first equation. So our first equation is x square plus a minus 5 into x plus 1 is equal to 0. For this equation I am taking d is equal to 0 that means equal and real root. So let's apply d is equal to 0 we will get this as a minus 5 whole square minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we'll get this as a minus 5. If I take root over on both sides, taking 4 on the other side, I'll get this as plus or minus 2. So from here, I can say that a has two values. For plus, it is plus 7. And for minus, it's, it is equal to plus 3. So a is taking three values here. Now let's check for a is equal to 7. Both the equations and conditions are satisfying or not, like we have checked in the last case. So for a is equal to 7, let's check. Let's start with the first equation only. So our first equation would be x square plus 7 minus 5 that is 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now this equation will give me a root that is only a single root and that will be equal to minus 1 because this is a perfect square. x plus 1 whole square is equal to 0 so x will be equal to minus 1. Now I assume that the first equation will give me a positive root but here I got x is equal to minus 1. So clearly the value of a is equal to 7 will be clearly rejected. There is no need to check for the second equation. Now again I'm going to check for a is equal to 3 whether this is going to satisfy or not. So for a is equal to 3 let's check for the first equation like we have checked in the first case. So we have x square. Now if you put 3 here you'll get this as 3 minus 5 that is minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now this implies you'll get one root that is x is equal to 1. Now this is accepted. Now we have to check whether this is true for the second equation or not. Whether we get x less than 0 or not. So if you put a is equal to 3 in the second equation, we'll get this as x square plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now from here, you'll get alpha and beta. Now you can easily check alpha and beta will be both less than 0. Here. You can easily calculate and check. Both will be less than 0 for sure. That means for x less than 0, this is accepted. That means a is equal to 3 will be our solution. Now in the end, I'm going to give you the conclusion. Now as we have calculated from first case we got a is equal to 1 and from case 2 we got a is equal to 3. Now only two values are there from which we can get three real and distinct roots for this quadratic equation. So if you like the video please like and subscribe and that will be all.